Okay, I'm here with Aiden. We're going to start to remove the spindle. What I'm gonna need you to do is hold on to this part and make sure it doesn't drop. Okay. This is the most important part of this whole assembly. So stand over here so people can see what you're doing. So no pressure, okay? All right, don't hold it like that. Just hold it naturally, okay? Okay. So you're gonna seem some force. Just look, just hold it steady, okay? Okay. I am gonna go and get on it. Okay? Okay. Now what is this called that we're doing? Uh, this. I forgot. Spindle. All right, you got it? Got it still? Okay guys, so we are looking at my spindle. Got it out, my son assisted. So this, these two are the precision bearings, the spacer, another spacer, and then uh, a bearing up here. There is some surface blemishes, nothing crazy. Can clean that up. The direction seems like it kind of was spun within the housing a bit, but about what I expect out of bearings. Now, I don't know if this is standard, this right here, the way this looks. Let me see if I can zoom in. Focus. See that there, how that looks? It looks like it was ground down, like, like with a file. Just to reiterate some points on removing the spindle, when you lock here, you can see it here, when you lock this, you're actually locking the coil so the coil doesn't move, but the spindle can still move because it's a loose press fit inside the coil. So that's why you lock this down and you push this up as much as possible so the spindle has as much space over here to come out. So luckily for me, it all went smoothly. So. Now we're at the point O, oh, and if you need to tilt your head, just loosen these two screws. It's a, what is this? Three quarter, one, two, loosen, don't remove. And what is this? Clockwise, clockwise, tilt it up. Counterclockwise tilts it down.
<laughs> yeah, having the time of her life. All right, so you have the spindle apart. Um, got a, looks good. I cleaned it up some, so all of this is some like fretting or corrosion that's on the bearing face. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. The inner race, it looks good. Pretty consistent wear going around. Um, I did clean up the these two. I gotta mic this to make sure they're the same height. I cleaned up this. I do have some rust over here, as well as some rust on the inner side of this spacer. Don't know if that's visible. It's like little dots, you see there? Um, so I got those to clean up. These bearings will be replaced. They actually look good, so, you know, but better safe to replace than anything else. I did clean up the nut that applies the preload to the thrust bearings, which are these two. I believe they're put in a DB configuration. So we have everything cleaned up. I got it as clean, as good as I'm gonna get everything. So I cleaned the spindle with WD-40. I cleaned everything else, any of the surfaces that I don't really, that are, that's not that critical. Like the face I left alone, cause that's, I wanna try and keep that as parallel as possible. So I cleaned that with a rag and then the sides I cleaned with my wire wheel, this wire wheel, and then WD. So I'm trying not to touch anything or have anything exposed to too dirty of an environment. If you want some great videos on doing this, then um, I would suggest that you look at Robin's video. I'm gonna leave a link in the description as well as H&W, especially Robin's level of detail in all of these aspects and especially with these configurations for the bearing the bearing pairs so um yeah watch this but for me i have seal bearings they're timken bearings they're from h and w machine i'll leave a link to this kit as well in the video and i cleaned up everything that's about it so now I'm gonna put everything back together. I'm gonna try and be as clean as humanly possible. And I'm gonna wear fresh gloves. I'm gonna use Kim wipes to give it a final wipe down. I'm using some Molly lube on everything that's not a bearing surface just to prevent any kind of rust. And I'm using some high pressure lube for the bearing surfaces. All of these is going to be a very, very, very thin amount. I have it all laid out as I take it out so I know how to put it back together. Okay, so this is it. These two bearings are critical in terms of your orientation. You basically want the letters facing each other. That's, that's what it boils down to. In terms of picking the right bearings, just buy H&W's bearing kit for redoing your spindle. The story's done. This one is mainly for alignment. It goes somewhere up here, so. That's about it. These are the tools that I used. My one to two inch mic for measuring here and here. This bears on the outer race, which is here. And this bears on the inner race. And they have to mic the same or you will impose a moment onto the bearings, which you don't wanna do. All right, so that's about it. She is enjoying the floor. Yes, you are. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm supposed to be, I gotta keep clean. <sighs> yeah. All right, I gotta put this together and move her away before I open up the bearings cause she, she's, she, yeah. All right, we're back together. Uh, I got the two new bearings in. I put some Miley lube on the spacers there's an inner spacer and an outer spacer, what I showed earlier. And one sits on the inner race and the other one sits on the outer race. So these are put back together properly. 
and then there's the top bearing here. I put Molly, there's a few liquids I used, or lubes. So I put some Molly on anything that wasn't a bearing face or a bearing interface. Then I put some high pressure lube on anything that was, and I put a very, very, very light, light, light coat. And then after that, I just wiped it with some chem wipes. I like some lube between the faces. I don't really like metal surfaces touching each other with nothing there. It's just a thing for me. Um, one to control how much preload you get on it. You can look at how much threads you had exposed on your spindle. That should give you roughly amount, the same amount of preload as you had before. The shoulder of the spindle seats this bearing, this lower portion of the pair of, of, uh, of DB bearings, duplex bearings. And the nut applies a compression load onto this whole assembly, compressing it, putting the preload on this assembly. So um, that is how preload works. There's a bit more to it, but for our purposes, that is, that's what you need to worry about. Now, the nut, I did put some thread locker, this stuff, because I, it's threads. I, I like, you don't necessarily need it if you apply the right torque. And I used a spanner wrench, so use a spanner wrench. That is about the amount of exposure I had, which was pretty much none in, in my um, nut. So that's that, we're done there. I used for my set screw, the kit that H&W gives is a very nice kit. It comes with everything, there's no thinking involved. You don't have to look at your your spindle OD and determine what fit you need and making sure you order the right bearings and also the right configuration. You don't have to do all that. H&W gives it to you all as a kit, includes new set screws, you're good to go. What I used was my Jacobs drill R8 collet as well as my, uh, I think a 7 I think there's a 7 8 collet and I used that to set the depth. I did it where I let it touch and then backed off about a quarter turn and then slid this in and out of the bottom end until I got, and that's when I wanted to make sure it was good. So we are all back together. I'm not going too crazy on the spline portion because inside the bridge port is nasty. It's nasty. So Going crazy here has got no purpose. When I rebuild, rebuild the machine, instead of doing this like little refresh. Get the spindle in. I have to get this aligned with the, with the, the grooves in here. So let's see if we can see that. Uh, see, see in there? There's some spines, can't see it that well. Uh, it's not better. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to first put the spindle in and I'm going to align the grooves in there with the splines. Once I get that aligned, then I'm going to try and press it in by hand as much as I can. Because then at that point I know it slides. And also I'm going to spin it. Once I spin it, this should move. So if all of that moves, that means I know I'm in line.
Look at that. <laughs> Okay, so that's the final seating of that. I have a little bit more to do in terms of cleanup of this nut and we'll get her finished up. Okay, as a little bit of insurance, I'm going to put some extreme pressure lube around just this face here. It shouldn't need it, it shouldn't need anything. But, you know, me being me, it'll just make me feel better and sleep easier at night. That's all I'm putting, and I'm going to wipe that down with a Kim White and then put the cap on. There's the little set screw here. All right? That screw aligns with that hole. So I'm going to just mark the hole and I'm because there's two of them so I'm gonna know that this is it to try and get it lined up as well as I can to put the screw in so yeah that's about it I think I'm gonna stop here it's three in the morning <laughs> so yeah till next time